I want to check uh, um, right. so I let the number A to be to be the norm of X number B to be no, Y Any 
a number. And uh, and then select an alpha in C such that alpha y x equal to the f value of x. Or maybe I just sorry, maybe I I just let alpha to be the but the stage oh okay. Um ah, sorry. Okay, that's good. I think I have to I want to make something uh, simple but it's it's impossible. Okay. So it's let alpha to C such that. Um, alpha times y x um, equal to root x. Right. Um, and uh, the right and the alpha is just equal to y. I think. Um, if if the this is not um, if this inner is not um, zero, if this is not zero, okay, we can divide uh, this inner part and we can move them right. So we can divide both sides by this complex number to get half of half, right? But what if if this input is zero, then we cannot divide, right? Because if this input is zero, then by conjugate symmetry, this is also zero, so it's true. And then any alpha will satisfy this identity, right? So I cannot give you a unique alpha. That's why this is the problem. So, so I just select alpha, right? In C. Such that this is true, and then the, the norm, the, the absolute value of r is equal to 1. But I can always do so, right? I can always do so. Is that okay for you? Because if, if this inner part is 0, I just select alpha to be 1. Okay? No problem with that. But if this is non zero, then alpha is, is very specific because alpha is equal to this number divided by this complex number. Okay? And then the norm of alpha should be 1, of course. Of course. Since um, I give you, so, alright, give a remark you. Not equal to 0, then alpha should be equal to. Value divided by okay. and uh, alpha, the next value of alpha is equal to the x value of the inner product of x y and uh, the x value of y is x. And this is okay. So now we exchange the order of x and y. We have to put a bar here. Yeah. But whenever you put the x value, then they are the same, right? So this is the one. So of course. That there's no other choice. So if this if this is a non-zero, then the alpha should be very specific, which is equal to this one. So of course it exists, right? We know how to pick such an alpha, and the x value of alpha is equal to one, of course. And when when the inner product is zero, then of course this is zero, 
and we can select alpha arbitrarily. But we insist that the absolute value of alpha should be one. So because you have, you have infinitely infinite many alphas to select, right? So you say, for example, alpha equal to one would be enough. Or you can select alpha to be high, the the imaginary new high. It is also okay, right? So anyway, I can always find select such an alpha. Okay. All right. So I have R. Well, I have R, which is arbitrary. R is an arbitrary real number, but alpha is more specific. It's just a one, just one alpha um, satisfy this property. Okay. So now, so now we know that by the non-activity of uh, so, so this is the inner product of x minus this quantity, right? Which is sum. So it's so it's going down to zero. And then I will use the linearity for the first argument and the conjugate linearity for the second argument. I can expand it into x, x minus alpha, y minus.
So this inequality is good for all real number R. So now we can set, so now we let R to be equal to x, y, the x value of this inner product divided by the square of the norm of y here, so if r is here. So if we plug in the, this specific value of r into it. So we find that 0 is less than equal to x squared. The, the, the square of the norm of x and uh, minus 2. So we have So now they are the same, right? But we have two units of them. So so that uh, we have
Any questions? Uh, so this is standard, right, by linearity. And, and for the first conjugate, by conjugate linearity for the second algorithm, we, we have that. And then we, we consider the, the two middle terms. We find that they are conjugated to each other. So that uh, the result, the sum, comes to two times of the real part. But the real part of uh, x of a common number would be less than equal to the x value of right? The real part of a common number is less than equal to the x value of the common number. Any question? If you have a question, I can prove that for you. Now the real part is an upper bound, which is just the absolute value of the constant. Okay, so we combine back to here. Back to here, we know that this is less than two times of x and y. So okay, so we have the upper bound. Okay, so. The square of the norm of x plus y is less than equal to x plus 2 plus up to here. So we have this inequality. Now, we have conditional inequality, right? So this we still have another upper bound. And the upper bound is the, the product of the length of the norm of x and the norm of y. And plus, yeah. This is by conditional inequality. Uh, the third problem here, the third problem people have. And uh, it, it's a perfect square. square. So the square of the norm of x plus y is less than but equal to the square of the sum of the norm of x and the norm of y. So by taking the square root. So by taking the square root, um, by taking the square root, so we have x plus y less than equal to x plus y. Okay. Okay. Right. So. So 
this is the triangle in public. Now, we go back here. Can see um, then this is equal to so. so this is the Pythagorean theorem. So if x and y is, is zero, so is zero in the product, then that um, uh, we have the Pythagorean. So this is true uh, if I'm only a real power. Uh, I think that would be enough. So if this is true, then this is true. Um, so please correct the statement uh, for the fifth term. It's not a uh, economic condition. Because last time I I, I state this you got the condition right? Um guys because I can remember. And yeah, yeah, so you have to correct it. Okay. And that even only should be only sufficient. <coughs> What, what did I do? And I write. The, the fifth problem, yeah. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> David is here. Um, do you have that? Oh, I have a finish here. Okay. Can I have someone at the record of my last statement? Oh, that gives the study of the record. Oh, yeah. How about yours? No, 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 this is correct. Hmm? Oh, you, oh, you changed it. Oh, I see. So, this, the statement should be, um, the statement should be if triangle. Correction. Um, if the fixed from you should stay, if uh, x, y, if it is zero, then, um, then transforming policy. So you should set if then. This is correction. As you can see that uh, the Pythagorean uh, equation exists if and only if that the real part of the inner product is zero. So if we are considering inner product over the real numbers, then of course this is if and only condition. Okay? So so if we are considering the real case, then, then the economic plan is true. But for the complex case, it is just a sufficient condition, not a necessary condition. So this is one of the difference between complex inner product spaces and the real inner product spaces. Any questions about the proof of the five properties of the norm of a vector in a complex inner product space?
So a set is called an orthogonal set if uh, you pick up two distinct vectors in the set and they are mutually orthogonal. Uh, means that the inner product between these two vectors is zero. Okay. Theorem that x b and a sargon set of non zero vectors in an inner product. So any orthogonal set of non-zero vectors is linearly independent. The reason why I have to explicitly state that uh, x consists of only non-zero vectors is because that for an orthogonal set, an orthogonal may contain zero vectors because zero vectors is orthogonal to any other vectors, right? Because that x zero always equal to zero. What? I show you. Mm -hmm. okay. the mark. Give me your remark. Consider an arbitrary linear relation. Okay, and it means that uh, we 
the, the coefficients are complex numbers, the vectors are in the set S, so that's such a linear relation. And now I want to prove that with this linear relation, then alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 2, alpha 1 should be all zeros. Mm -hmm. So now I will show that. Okay, so now Taking inner product. Alright, with VI on both sides. Find can be from one to n. So just I just taking we have So we have here alpha 1 v1 plus alpha n vn, right? And uh, vi is equal to 0 and vi. Okay? So I just take the inner product. Now, by linearity, for the first argument of the unit in so we have uh, alpha 1, 1, i, plus, plus, plus alpha i, 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 plus, 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 plus alpha n, i, n, i, is equal to 0 because this is a zero vector. But as I say, x is an also normal, also gonna say. So that vi, v1, vi, this is zero, this is zero. Except this one. This is non-zero, right? So this is zero, zero one. So that implies that of i, vi, vi equal to zero. So this implies that alpha i is zero since vi vi is greater than zero. Why? Because that the set x does not contain any zero vectors. So this is greater than zero. Okay. So we show alpha i is zero. So study from an arbitrary linear relation here, we prove that the coefficient of i should be zero. Should be zero. So the conclusion by our definition, so s is linearly. So we have some colorways. The first one is that 
in, in Rn aus dn. Here does not. There doesn't exist. A normalized vector inside a vector with unit norm. Okay. A set X is called an orthonormal set. The vector in this set should be normalized. It means that every set has length one. Right? So of course, this set, any orthonormal set, cannot contain zero vector because zero vector 
the length of your vector is zero, huh? cannot be one. So, so as a normal say, it's an orthogonal say, which consists of normalized vectors. Definition is followed from the projection, the orthogonal projection, right? Uh, in, when we study the Euclidean geometry in the real case. Sometimes people use orthogonal projection.
before I, I take a break, I think I um, so, so now, um, a theorem should be put is that x minus, so here, this one, This one is x minus the projection of y x, alright? So this part. And you can see that in real cases, right? in real case, I have to say in real case, this vector is assigned onto this vector, right? Assigned onto this vector. Because the angle is a right angle. But in complicated, in com complex case, we don't have so salient angle concept, right? So we have to show that because we define a certain energy by using the inner product, all right? So, so what I want to show in this theorem is that x minus the projection of x onto the y. This vector, right, vector, is a sign on to projection. So we want to put this. Of, uh, of the um, in the graph for the first complement, we have x and uh, minus. So we, um, we move because of the contra linearity of, for the second argument. We move the coefficient out of the inner graph. We have to take the compass conjugate. So the compass conjugate is here. And, and here we have uh, x and y. And how about this one, Anna? So we have a coefficient so that when we take this. So actually, uh, this is the um, by the first property because this is scalar times y, right? And so it's the square of the norm. So this is actually um, over. Okay, I just use the linearity. Okay. 
So we have x, y, and times with x, y, commas conjugate. And here we have y, and here. And so we cancel, because y is not zero. So we cancel them here. What happened? This number are the same, right? So we have zero. And uh, we have that. Okay. Immediately. So this is the substitution, right? We substitute everything into that. And be patient to, to dispense of everything. And the result is zero. Okay. So from that, the projection, the projection, yeah, and the difference from the x to the projection will be a thousand. So this justifies our definition to say that uh, this, whenever we have uh, inner product to be zero, then we say they are a thousand. And it coincides with this concept. You will follow the projection concept from the real case. Okay, so let's take a five minutes break. If we want to 
find something here, right? So this projection. So So now let x and v. Okay. So a proper definition. A proper definition of the projection.
Don't worry about whether it's correct or not. Other suggestion? By your intuition, okay. <laughs> this, yeah, up to we all we almost at the end of the semester. I I, I know you know something in your mind. Just just say, it. say. It. Be my guest, you know. So we 
will consider the case. The W is n dimension, means finite dimension. Okay? And the P is the you know, small basis for W. You may question me that uh, can we find always find an orthogonal basis for the W? Well, I can give you the answer yes, uh, but I will verify that later. So just say that we have uh, an orthogonal basis. So an orthogonal basis is something that I, I just showed you is an orthogonal set, and it's also a basis. Okay, but. It is when it is orthogonal set, and because the set consists of n vectors, then it should be a basis, right? Because it's n dimension. Okay. So any so if the dimension of W is n, and if we find a linearly independent set which consists of uh, n vectors, then it should be a basis. And we we already know that if this is an orthogonal set, it must be linearly independent. Okay, and it has n vector. So it must be a, a basis. Okay, so this has all right, so good. So now any vector that's Any vector y in W is can be written as alpha one in one plus alpha two. Projection beyond projection to be in W, right? We have the projection WX would be um number one. One plus our two two plus alpha and two n. Okay, because it's in W, so it can be expressed as a linear combination of the vectors in this orthogonal basis. So the point is, <coughs> we have to find the coefficient, right? Either from two or from three. Because to give a definition, this definition should be where well, one should be precisely which one, right? We cannot have ambiguity. Alright, so so now, now by the second second requirement. Alright, by the second requirement, we have to plug into here. So so this is the um, X dimension I from one to n of I U I. Okay? And uh, from one to n alpha J J to zero. So now we have this requirement. So 
deixa eu ver. Alright, so now, so now, um, so from 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 there, um, so we have uh, x and summation. Uh, <coughs> Right. It must be equal. And the alpha j, because of uh, conjugate linearity, So the suggestion, what is the suggestion? Because we want this to be true, right? So so what is the suggestion for for the for the upper eye, for the coefficient? What is the suggestion? From here. Under what condition this is true? Because we want to be zero, right? So, so this actually is that direction. We want this to be true, zero, right? And this is zero if only if this is true, if only if this is true. Right? Because this is if only if that. The requirement is here. So the requirement, we haven't given a definition for the projection. We just know we want the projection to be in the subspace. Now. So that's why we put here. And the second requirement is that we want that this assault. Right? This one is assault. So that the first product would be zero. And, and this is zero if and only if this is true. And this should be true for any x, right? For any x. So, so what is the proper definition? Um, I, they, they, the i and the j actually the, just dummy, dummy uh, index only, right? So, so, so it suggests, so from here, right? 
is that is what? Is that the Yeah, that's right. How come you just speak out, right? So the, the suggestion is that um, the alpha i should be defined to be equal to the x and the y. Because, because this is true for any x, right? For any x, for any x. So, um, So this is true for any x and um, to um, a proper definition with the help of an orthonormal basis. And of course the W, the subspace is M is fine dimension. Because if it's infinite dimensional then the, 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 the story is a little bit difficult. So I don't want to touch it right now. Okay? Because up to now we are talking about fine dimension. Okay, so this is the um, okay. right. So I give you a, a direct uh, definition of a projection of a vector onto a finite-dimensional subspace with the half of the also normal basis for that subspace because this is very simple, right? A very simple definition. So from here, you know, this is a in the combination of the basis. So of course, this vector is in is in W. And uh, and the, and the, this projection is satisfied uh, the requirement second. And uh, it actually um, it implies to this one. So um, later on, I will show to you that. Um, and maybe I have to follow you sometimes. Okay.
So now I give the theorem that uh, x minus the projection as a result. Because this is what we want, right? So the reason why we keep this projection is because we want this property. So now we choose to choose this one. So this suggests Okay, so so we have the jail here. And then we will we will prove the third part. The distance. Okay. The minimum of okay. So we will prove that. This direction. Oh. Um, just say um so let y
space, right? So, um, the ensemble way is that uh, it's not only uh, ensemble to the projection itself, but also ensemble to every vector in God. So it's much more stronger. I'm sorry, I have to rewrite it. So please correct it. Okay? Not only the projection, just one. Okay, and so, so the second requirement is that uh, we should uh, the new shape should be zero, right? Right, so it's much more simpler for all n because that it's a sum on to every element in W. So in particular, it should be um, a sum to the UJ. Because the UJ is in the subspace. Alright, and so we have UJ. So this is UJ. And uh, so here is so this is equal to summation okay of i u i and in our case so this x is u j here and we move here, with that, and this is alpha j, and the u j, u j, okay. because when i land for the j, this is zero, and so we have uh, alpha, because this is one, so that uh, we find that that the coefficient our j should be equal to x for all that's the only definition the projection of you x comes to summation alright so, so it's uniquely determined Nice. So we need a stronger uh, property that is to need a stronger property. So the projection. So we get the same definition, but this definition is unique. No other choices. If we want a uh, total to be true. So in particular, so this is so that uh, with, with that uh, definition, okay. So we have to say that. So our theorem is broader because we we, we, add, we require more, right? We require more here. So this is the, the situation. Okay. So it's so the original statement is too weak, and uh, so we, we we need to put more stronger requirement. And with that requirement, the theorem, okay, so that um, so that we can prove x minus projection is the minimum of uh, x minus one, and the proof is here. So now this y is in double. Now we can see the x and y. We want to know that the, the distance between x and y. And um, 
this is x minus projection of double x plus projection of double x minus y. Alright? So we, we, we subject the projection of x onto W and 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 n back again. Now we have to, we have the sum. We have the length of the sum of two vectors. Now by triangular inequality, by triangular inequality, that uh, this is uh, equal to uh, oh yeah.
So I have the same one here. Um, and uh, the projection W. Okay. Okay, so our third requirement is set up automatically. Okay, so uh, the projection is very special. That uh, um, is a vector uh, in um, on the, in the in the subset W, and uh, it is a sum on to a sum on to um, to every vector in W. The second thing is that. Is the unique vector that uh, that uh, it has a minimum distance uh, to the to x. Okay, so this is uh, so this is the part we want, right? And uh, we, we we have uh, the problem we want. And I have to emphasize uh, again that uh, that we are talking about finite dimensional subspace problem. So we just talk about the projection of a vector. Onto a finite dimensional subspace. So if uh, if uh, if it is not finite dimension, infinite dimension, we need to put more property on top of that. It's called closed, but um, but this concept is more advanced, so I hold it. Okay. And the second thing is we rely on in the construction, we rely on a normal basis. Uh, but we will, I will show to you that uh, next month, uh, uh, Wednesday, that we can always construct some more basis from a basis, any basis we can construct by the grand schemes uh, optimization procedure. So, so we, we, will, we will talk about that next week. So we have uh, uh, this one, the properties about the projection. And the projection uh, is a, a key concept. Uh, in the inner production. So I spend a lot of time on this side. I hope you to, uh, to find it. Uh, and I'm sorry that uh, the second requirement, the statement is, uh, is too loose. I have, I have to put, be careful to put the right uh, uh, requirement. But anyway, thank you for your suggestion. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, so now then uh, I will start here.